Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie and I'm back with y'all today to show you a surgical cap tutorial. It's a pattern that I created. The reason that I created it was because I'm a dentist and next week when I go back to work, one of the requirements is we're going to have to up our PPE, which is personal protective equipment. And one of the things that we're going to be required to wear is a surgical cap or something to cover our head. So I created a pattern and I will link it in the description below. It's a pattern that I created. You can print it off and feel free to duplicate it, share it, modify it, whatever you want to do, um, because it, it is my pattern. And so I'm giving it to everybody um, so that maybe you can do your own scrub cap. What, the first thing that you're gonna need to create your own um, surgical cap is my very favorite thing, and I've talked about this before in my other videos, is a fat quarter. If you don't know what a fat quarter is, it's a pre-cut piece of material that's 18 by 21 or 18 by 22 inches, which is a quarter yard of fabric that's been pre-cut. You can get these at Walmart, Target, Amazon, any fabric store, and this is what they look like. They come in these little squares, and I love them because they're just all kinds of cute little colors, and they're not intimidating, and so for, these run about a dollar each, so for about a dollar, you can create a surgical cap. The problem with the surgical cap is not the amount of money because they only cost about a dollar to create, but once you get started doing them, they will take about an hour. That's what it takes me is about an hour to make it. Hold that thought. Sorry about that. My little dog rang his bell. He needed to go outside. So you pick a fat quarter, and the pattern that I designed is so that you can make a surgical cap that ties on the back and a coordinating mask all with one fat quarter. You can get all of this out of one fat quarter. The only other thing that you will need as far as materials is you will need a piece of backing fabric if you want a piece of backing fabric. You don't have to have that, but there's not enough material to do that. You will have to have a piece of backing fabric and you will have to have three pieces of seven inch elastic in a quarter, one eight inch width, excuse me, one eighth inch width. So to make a surgical cap and a mask, you'll, and here's another one that I made. This one's a navy. Isn't just that so cute? And I did a pink backing on that and pink stitching, but that's a navy set. I just love these sugar skulls. I love that. And I got these at Walmart. They had black and they had red. Now, if you'll notice in the one that I'm wearing, it has a black border around it. So I used more than one fat quarter to make this. I had some solid black that I coordinated with this. But you don't have to do that. You can just do the whole surgical cap out of one fat quarter. On this one, I added the little buttons here so that if you wanted to attach your N95 mask to the buttons instead of behind your ear, that's another um, additional thing that you can do. So I will link in the description the pattern that I created and the instructions. Now keep in mind, I'm a dentist. I'm not a professional seamstress or professional YouTuber. So have patience with my pattern and cut me a little slack because it's just something that I just jotted out myself. There may be some mistakes. Um, I'm sure there probably are many mistakes, but just know that it's just something that I just came up with myself. So we're gonna start with our fat quarter. And our first cut that we're going to make, we can come a little closer right here. We're gonna start at the bottom and we're going to cut all the way across the fat quarter in a four and a half inch wide strip. Now I've written down here, it's four and a half inches if you're a female, or it's five inches if you're a male or if you're a female with a lot of hair. Now my hair is about shoulder length, maybe a little below, and so I did mine the four and a half inch because I like mine to fit kind of tightly and then I just tuck my hair in the back. But if you have a lot of fabric, or maybe if you're a larger male, you might wanna do the five inch pattern. So let's do that first cut. Come a little closer, Tori. So as you recall, I use a rotary cutting mat, an acrylic ruler, and a rotary cutting blade. Just to review, my mat that I use is an 18 by 24 cutting mat. The reason that I like that is because your whole fat quarter will fit on the mat at one time and it doesn't take up a lot of room. The acrylic ruler that I use is a six by 24. 
The reason that I like this is because it goes all the way from end to end. So this is a really good set to start with if you're out planning to buy um, an acrylic ruler and mat. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your fabric, fabric is straight. Most of the time when you get a fat quarter in, they usually do come pretty straight, but sometimes you may need to straighten them up a little bit. So this one's straight. So I'm gonna lay it on my mat. Another thing that you wanna do, always on the edge of your fabric is gonna come this little factory edge. You wanna cut that off. It's about a half an inch wide, and you're really not supposed to use that. I have sewn on that if I'm tight for fabric and I just really need a little extra and just a little extra and I don't quite have enough, I will sew over that. But in this particular pattern, you have enough, you can cut that off and you'll be fine. So what you do is you wanna line up your fat quarter, come a little closer. You wanna make sure that your fabric is lined up on the black line so that you have a nice straight edge. So then I'm gonna line this acrylic ruler up, top to bottom here, and I'm gonna take my rotary cutter, hold it securely, and I'm gonna cut off that little factory edge that we don't need. So the first piece that we're gonna cut is four and a half by 22. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna count for one, two, three, four and a half. I'm gonna do four and a half, and I'm gonna go all the way across my fat quarter, and I'm gonna cut it. So that's our first piece, and that's gonna be piece B. So I'm gonna fold that in half, and I'm gonna take my fabric marker, and I'm gonna label that piece B, so that I'll know which one it is, and then I'm gonna mark the center just by folding it in half, because that will be important later, okay? So that's my first piece. Then I'm gonna go up from the bottom. My next piece is piece E. That piece is three and a half inches by 22 inches. So I'm gonna cut that. Well, I've already got the half, so I just count three. One, two, three. So that's three and a half by 22. Okay, I obviously need a new blade because my cutter is not cutting all the way through. Okay, everybody, we're back. Have a brand new blade. So this, the next piece that we cut, we're gonna label piece E. It's three and a half inches wide by 22 inches long, and we're gonna label that piece so that we won't get it mixed up. So this is piece E, and also, as it says on the pattern, we're gonna mark the center. So all I do is I fold it in half, and I'm gonna make a little mark at the top and the bottom to mark the center, and I'm gonna lay it to the side. Okay, so our next piece, we go up the pattern, is D, two piece Ds, and they're three and a half by 22, and then we cut them in the middle. So I'm gonna count one, two, three and a half. Close it right in the middle. And I hate to bore you with this cutting, but that's one thing that's very, very important about this pattern because you literally are using almost every square inch of this fat quarter. So if you don't cut it exactly as I have it laid out in the pattern, you won't have enough fabric. So that's why I'm taking a little bit more time going over the cutting with y'all. Okay, so this piece is three and a half by 22. Yes, brand new blade, so that works well. This next piece is a three and a half by 22, and we're gonna cut it in half. So we're gonna cut it at 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so we're gonna cut this here. Okay, so we've got two pieces that are labeled piece D. D and D. Okay, so we'll set those to the side. Then we've got one piece left. So with this, it takes two pieces that are six by nine and six by nine, and then that'll give us one little section left to cut. So I'm gonna pull this down, line everything up, I'm gonna cut this little crooked part off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm okay, and then another six by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's about to make me mad. Two, three, four, five, six. This is not a real Fiskars brand blade. With the short supply that we're in, I had to order this knockoff kind, and it's not doing very well. <sighs> Falls in. So I've got my two top pieces that are a six by nine and a six by nine. So I'm gonna label this six by nine piece A, which is gonna be the top of our cap. And then this six by nine, we're gonna say this if you want to make a coordinating mask. The reason that I like to label these is because when I have a lot of projects going, I tend to get distracted. So I may start this one and walk off and forget it and come back. And then I get here and I go, what piece is this? I can't, I can't remember what I did. So I like to just label them in case I come back an hour later, I can remember where I was. So there's those pieces. And then we have one little bitty piece left. I told you you're gonna use every inch of this whole back quarter. So this is a two by, this is a four by six piece of fabric. And we're gonna lay this out and we are going to cut this and make two pieces. And you're gonna have um, a two by six piece. So we got that, so we've got two two by sixes, and these are labeled piece C. So we're gonna put C on this and C on this. So now we have all of our pieces cut that we need to make our surgical cap and our mask, and we'll take it to the sewing machine. Okay, the final piece that I need to show you to cut that's actually, you're just gonna kinda have to improvise, is, and it's shown right here in the pattern, is in this one six by nine piece, you have to shape the top for the cap. And what you do is you just basically round off the edges and then make a little point on the tail. And if you, if you take a six by nine piece and you lay this down on the six by nine piece, basically it will take up the whole square. So now I've got my piece um, and I had to cut it with scissors because my rotary cutter is, I guess, mad at me today. So I've got my little piece and basically it's a six by nine square and you've just rounded the corners and then you've made the top an oval and you make the bottom a point. I folded it in half and I marked my center at the top and the bottom. So now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're gonna do our wrong sides together and we've got our center lines marked. We're gonna go back on the machine. Come on, Miss Bernina. Let's do a good job here for everybody. And we're going to do an eighth of an inch seam all the way around. So here we go. And as we go, we're gonna lift our foot. This Bernina has a knee control for your, for your foot, which is really cool, which means I can use both hands and control the foot with my knee. So I'm gonna go around and as I go, I'm gonna take my top piece that's curved and I'm gonna gently conform it so that these edges meet up and keep and if you'll notice I'm not using any pins to do that I'm just going slowly I'm going to pull this do an eighth of an inch seam all the way around see how that's curving so I'm going to lift my foot a little bit and I'm going to kind of tug that little piece around just like this we're tugging it around eighth of an inch making those meet up And then if you did it right, your two pieces will end up meeting the pointy part to the corner right here. So we go all the way to the end with our eighth of an inch. Then when we get to the end, we're gonna back stitch a little bit and cut. 
One thing I'm trying to get used to is keeping some snips in the same place every time so that when I get ready for them, I don't have to search for five minutes to find my snips. So I'm trying to get in the habit of putting my snips back in the same spot. Okay, so I've got it sewn all the way around from center to the point. So now I'm gonna go over here on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing and sew from the center to the point again. So we'll do that and then we'll meet back up. Okay, so we put our wrong sides together and we stitch all the way around an eighth of an inch. Now this is where the really cool part comes in. We're gonna flip it inside out like this with our wrong sides showing and now we can start back at the corner, we're gonna put it back on the machine and we're gonna sew all the way back around again with a quarter inch seam. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna encase that eighth of an inch raw edge all the way around so that when we flip it back out again, the inside of our cap has a nice professional edge all the way around and you don't have any ugly edges showing. So I'm gonna put it back on the machine with the wrong side showing. Come back over here, Tori. And keep in mind, Miss Bernina and I, we're, we're still getting to know each other here. So let's see if she'll act right. So I'm gonna line that up and I'm gonna move over and do a quarter inch seam now all the way around. The reason you switch from an eighth to a quarter is because you wanna make sure you've moved over far enough that you don't catch that raw edge when you do the seam all the way around. So I folded my edge and you also wanna make sure that you have all this folded back because you'll get really frustrated if you get to the end and you realize you've, you've caught and sewn up part of your cap. All right, so we're gonna go again, we're gonna start. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit and I'm doing a quarter inch. And you may, if you don't know, you may wonder how do you know it's a quarter of an inch? The edge of this foot is a quarter of an inch. So if I just slowly go around and I keep the edge of the foot, I gotta kind of tuck and move now, but if I keep the edge of that foot lined up on the edge of the fabric, then I know that I have a quarter inch seam. Okay, here we go. Sorry, that was Brady. Okay, you can stop. Okay, so now for the really cool part. So we went all the way back around um, and we, we sewed our quarter inch seam and then when we flip it over like this, look at there, we have our little cap and then on the inside, it has this really pretty edge that has no raw edges. So now we're ready to move on to the next step. So the next step is we're gonna take our two C pieces and we're gonna put right sides together and sew them together to make one long piece. Then we're gonna take our E piece and our two D pieces and we're going to put right sides together on the E and then we're gonna sew one D on the end of an E then I'm gonna sew the other D on the other end of the E. The reason that you do this is because to join that piece, you don't want the seam to be right in the front center of the face. So the, the reason we do it like this is because we're gonna have the D piece that'll go all the way around and it'll be seamless. And then the two E pieces will attach here and make the ties that go on the back. So let me do that and we'll come back. Okay. So our next step is we've taken our two C pieces and we've sewn them together to make one long piece. We took our E piece as our center and we attached the D's to each end to make one long piece like this. Then I'm gonna show y'all something really cool that I just learned probably a couple weeks ago and that's a bias tape maker. This one's by Clover, it's a Clover 50. So we take our three and a half inch wide piece of fabric and you insert it into the Clover bias tape maker and you get it started and we'll get it all the way down to the end. And the way I usually do this is to fold this with my fingers then I end up burning my fingers and get all frustrated. So, um, what we do on this is, come over here and look up at my shoulder and you can. So I've gotten it started and what you do is you take your iron and once you get it started like this, you press down and then you pull, you pull your little clover and as you pull it, it folds it perfectly and you can iron it and it doesn't burn your fingers. I just think that's the coolest thing ever. So we go all the way down to the end with that and then we'll get back. Okay, so on our little strip, I did the same thing. I 
folded it, folded, folded the edges over, and then I folded it in half again to make our bias tape. So that's that little piece. And then on the big piece, I did that all the way down. And then you wanna make sure that you fold your ends down so that it'll be a nice clean edge. So I ironed that tab down like that, and then I folded it together on itself because we're gonna use this whole strip. So we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. So the next step is we're gonna take our hat and then we're gonna take our little short piece that we made the bias take out of. And we know that our center is right here where the two are joined. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the back of the cap where everything comes together in this little point and we're gonna hide all those edges and all that little ugliness right there by taking this and actually it didn't come together perfectly at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim that little part off right there where it didn't all come in quite perfectly on the back. We'll just, we'll just cut that off because it's not gonna show anyway. So then I'm gonna take this little piece and I'm going to put it here, right in the center of that. Carefully, I'm gonna fold it over. Look at there, look how good that's gonna look. That little line is right in the center. I'm gonna make sure I've got everything captured. Then I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna pin it together like that. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm going all the way down the raw edge of the back of the cap and I'm capturing it in this little bias tape that you created right here. We're gonna go all the way down to the end and we're gonna pin it. Just like that. Everybody loves these feathers. I've made so many things out of this fabric, on um, these feather fabric material, everybody wants it. So now we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna sew down this edge. We don't wanna sew in the middle because we're gonna do something else with that in a second. So we're gonna sew all the way down this edge. I'm gonna drop my foot, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit and I'm gonna pull my pin so all the way down and remember you want to manage your fabric you don't want your fabric to control you you want to control the fabric this is going to be a little bit bumpy because remember there were several pieces that join right here so I'm just going to take it slow I'm going to give it a little help all the way through there I'm going to make sure I'm pulling all this that I'm not causing any bunches or pulls or anything like that I'm going to go all the way down hold this pull that pin See, it's starting to get away from me a little bit right there, so I gotta get it back under control. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end, get ready to back stitch. Boom, we're done. Now, we're gonna look, and see it's a little long, but that's okay because that just helped us. We didn't have to be quite so concerned about making sure our fabric was matched up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right here to the end and we're gonna trim that edge because we don't need that extra. So we're gonna just trim that. Now we're gonna take our seven inch piece, seven inches long by one eighth inches wide, and I have it on a safety pin. And what we're gonna do is, if you've never done this before, this is, it looks super hard, but it's super easy. What you're gonna do is you're gonna feed this through that little casing you've made at the end. So we're gonna feed it all the way through. It doesn't take long, just all the way and it gets a little bit tricky right there in the middle because remember that's where we had several seams that kind of came together but I'm just gonna make it cooperate Time out. so we got our elastic to feed all the way through it was a little tricky right there in the middle where several of those seams came together but you just push through so I've got my safety pin all the way out the end, and if you'll notice, I've got a little bit of elastic left here at the end. The tricky part about this is not letting your elastic go, because if you let it go and you don't hold on to, it'll suck it back in there and then you gotta do it all over again. So I'm just gonna pull this to the end so that my seven inches is right there at the end. I'm gonna put it on the machine and I'm gonna sew that in place right at the edge so that my elastic doesn't move. I'm gonna go back and forth over that just a couple times. Okay. 
Did you see how I put my snips back on the spot where they went? Watch, see, I just put them right back there. Okay, so then what I do is, since we know that this elastic was seven inches long, I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna smoosh this down where it kind of looks kind of fluffy, and I'm gonna pull out two inches, and I'm gonna measure, here's my two inches. I'm gonna measure two inches. I have a little measuring tape right here on my sewing machine, so I know that's two inches, and then I'm gonna sew that down right there. So one thing that you may be thinking is, well, if she's gonna cut off two inches, why didn't you just make it five inches to start with? Well, with elastic, you wanna make it a little bit longer because if you don't fool with it just right, it'll suck back up in there and then you've lost it and you have to start over again. So it's better to make it just a little bit longer so that you have a little bit to work with and then you can sew it in place. And then all we have to do is cut off that last two inches because we have we we sewed it at the beginning and then we sewed it at the end and then we have this nice little elastic piece right here so believe it or not we have one more piece to attach and we're done with our cap okay correction to my video my daughter just informed me that at the beginning of the video i said if you're a female with a lot of fabric and I meant to say if you're a female with a lot of hair. So it's four and a half inches if you just have a regular head, but I guess if you're a male and you're, it's a little bit larger than you, the five inches, or if you're a female with a lot of hair, you might wanna do the five inches. But I, for me, this is how much hair I have, and I did the four and a half inch strip at the beginning. So for our last piece, we have our long strip that we made. We have the center marked, and the way I marked the center, I just folded it in half, and then where it came together, I marked it with my blue marker. And then I have the center of the front of the cap marked. So now what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your bias tape that you made, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna match up those center lines. You're gonna fold that over like a sandwich and you're gonna mark it right there. Then you're gonna fold this all the way around so that the tape hides those, that ugly raw edge. You're gonna go all the way around. And one trick that I like to do, see I made a little miscut right there at the beginning, but that's gonna be hidden inside this. And you'll never even know it's there. In fact, I'm just gonna cut that off. Um, but when you get all the way around to the end, I like to trail that off so that you have a little bit more space in the back with hair. So I'm gonna take this all the way to the back, fold it over, but then when I get right here at the end, instead of tucking this way in here, I'm just gonna make sure it catches it at the end by about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna make sure that's down. Make sure I've got it all pinned securely. And this is another area where I was explaining at the beginning do you remember how we took the, the two E's and we attached them to the D? The reason why, look where our seam ended up on the side. This is the E piece and this is the D piece. And your seam ends up way in the back instead of you having a seam right in the center of your forehead. So that's why we did that. So I'm gonna take this all the way around to the other side, do the same thing. Pin it. And then when I get that pinned in place, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew it again. So when you start to sew, I like to sew with my edge on the right. You may wanna sew a different way, but so now when I put it back on the machine, I kinda of have to think about how do I wanna sew this so my edge is on the right. So, so that we can sew all the way around, we're gonna start at the tail I'm gonna fold that down and then fold it over so that I have a nice professional looking edge. I'm gonna put it back on the sewing machine like this. My edge is folded to match. I'm gonna drop my foot and I'm gonna sew this part up horizontally. So I'm gonna sew a little bit. Back up a little bit to the edge. Stop, pivot. And now I'm gonna sew all the way around the cap at this top edge of the fabric and go all the way to the end. Sewn from here, you started? So I've sewn from here to here and then I'm coming around 
and I'm about to join it to the cap. So I'm gonna pinch that with my fingers to make sure that everybody stay, everything stays where I want it to stay. And get it all the way here. And remember, that's gonna get kind of bumpy because you got a lot of stuff coming together right there. And when I get to that little part, I'm gonna give it a back stitch right there at the joining to make sure that all that is secure. Now, if you've noticed, I've used a white thread on this, or it's actually like a dove gray because I wanted everything to blend in, and I would suggest doing that when you first start. You may want to, um, on this little navy one that I did, I did a pink stitch, which I think looks really pretty, but that's gonna show up and be an accent. So when you're learning, I would choose a thread that's gonna blend in case you make any kind of mistake and you don't wanna have to be perfect. Use a blending thread that if you get better and you want the thread to stand out, you may wanna use like a little pink accent thread. So I've got, I just made the bump over where this attaches to the cap. So now I'm gonna continue sewing all the way around. And remember, this is a stitch that is going to be visible. So you wanna make sure you take your time and you're, and you're doing a good job on this because this will not be hidden. This is gonna be on the very front of the forehead. So you don't want an ugly, jagged stitch. Okay, it's beginning to bunch a little bit. So remember, I wanna manage my fabric. So I'm just gonna kinda of make sure everything's tugged and pulled right. Okay, I'm coming up on another pin, so I'm gonna take that out. Make sure you're managing your fabric, you're keeping everything pulled back, because it'll really hurt your feelings if you get a little bit further and you feel something and you realize that you've sewn up part of your hat underneath your foot. That kind of stuff is what makes people quit sewing, because they, get, they start getting so frustrated when they make mistakes like that that they just get fed up with it. But you're gonna make mistakes, so just hang in there rip it out, start over again, and then the next time you'll remember to check and make sure that you didn't gather up any of your fabric. It's a mistake that everybody makes. And get all the way to, you see how this is wanting to kind of tug out? So I'm gonna make sure that that, I'm not gonna put it all the way down into the pocket, I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit because that just gives a little bit more room for hair. And I'm gonna hold it with my fingers, I'm gonna go all the way down. And remember, it's gonna get bumpy right here, so I'm ready. Okay, it kinda got bumpy, and I'm gonna go back over that hump to reinforce that again, because that's a place that could come unsewn. I'm gonna go all the way around. And I'm getting ready to come to the end. I'm gonna fold that tab down, fold it over again like that. Okay, when I get there, I'm gonna do one more stitch. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna pivot, and I'm gonna sew up that end. Back stitch. Okay, and I'm gonna cut. Trim our little threads. And our cap is done. So I'll put it on and show you how it looks. I didn't tuck my ponytail, but 